What's going on? Uh, so last Friday, Amy Nolte released the second of her recent harmonization challenges, uh, and this one was using the hook or the chorus melody from Easy by Mac Ayers, um, and it's pretty great. Uh, I really like it. I really like the melody. I really like the tune, Easy by Mac Ayers. It's a nice tune, and uh, I, I also really like how my harmonization turned out. Um, there, there are a few things that I might have tweaked um, and fine-tuned a little bit more uh, if I had more time, but there was a deadline. We got it on Friday, and then it was due Sunday night, so I had a few days to do that, but um, I think it turned out pretty well. So I mean, we can just kind of go through this. When I first got it, um, I kind of wanted to do something groovy, because the original song is pretty groovy, and, and you definitely can feel that groove, um, but she didn't record it to a click, and I did re-stretch it to, to a click, um, and I still have that re-stretching in here. Um, this is re-stretched to a two, click. I Whoop. So if we put this, hang on, yeah, there we go. So if we put this here and we turn the metronome on, one, two, right, it's on there and then here, still on, still on. So as you can see, it's on the click the whole time. Uh, so I restretched it there um, and, you know, that was, I mean, didn't take too long, so I didn't waste too much time. Uh, I probably m maybe spent like 10 minutes or 15 minutes restretching it a little bit. Uh, so fortunately, not too much of my time was wasted, but I did end up not using the, the restretched version because um, I would have had to also restretch the video, and I didn't want to try to do that because I've never done that before. Um, I've done plenty of audio manipulation, but I haven't done restretching a video before, and I didn't want to try too many... Uh, strange new things at once because I haven't done this kind of style of reharmonization before. I have done a little little bit of reharmonization in the past, but never in this kind of I harm you style uh, with uh, vocal dubbing. So this was really fun to just try this for the first time, and uh, you know I kind of I kind of like got to pretend to be Jacob Collier. And if you follow this channel, you know I'm a huge Jacob Collier fan. So it's really fun. Um, yeah, I have a list over here, which is why I might be looking over here of things so that I don't waste too much of your time as we go through this. So layering and panning, that's the first one. So how did I actually record these? How are they layered up? You can see there's a lot of things here. Is this like, is this, you know, like a, a 24 voice chord? No, um, I did four layers for each voice. So, um, if I have a, a chord with six voices in it, then I would do 24, uh, recordings because I would do four layers on each and so you know this is 28 recordings here 28 layers but it's actually a seven note chord with four for each um that's something i might have fine-tuned the number of layers the number of times i sang each note i might have fine-tuned that more if i uh, had more time but um for for this i pretty much pretty much every single one just has four four on it and the way i pan them is pretty consistent too if we scroll down here you can see maybe grab this group right here just a random group, but this this is pretty much how most of them went, uh, which is two of them hard panned, so 180 degrees, and then two of them kind of like mid panned. I mean, they're pretty wide, but not but not hard panned, so they're like 120 degrees or something like that. And um, yeah, a couple times I did more like 110 and 50 rather than 180 and 110, uh, or 120, 110, same thing, basically, uh, close enough. Um, and that would be, you know, if I wanted to center them more, like some of the bass vocals, I, I did that more. So, uh, yeah, let's let's just uh, look at the overall harmonic structure a little bit. The, the overall structure is that it it's simple at the beginning, and then it gets really complicated in the middle. Or I don't know if it gets really complicated. I, I would say it's pretty complicated, but it certainly gets very rich. 
uh, very spicy in the middle, and then it kind of tapers off, although the taper at the end is sh shorter than the, than the kind of buildup, uh, which I think is generally a good shape. You know, you want the peak to kind of be like in the middle to two-thirds of the way through, and then the tail can be uh, steeper at the end than at the beginning. Um, because once you you know you already got the people to feel chills, uh, so you don't need to you don't need to have as long of a tail uh, generally, right? So anyway, um, not that not that the goal is always to make people feel chills, but it's generally a pretty cool thing. So um, we start with the electric piano. One. It's just a chromatic walk down. Oh, let's turn that off. Uh, chromatic walk down from F major to C major, and it goes through um, goes F major. E7, E flat, major 7, D7, D flat, major 7, and then C. And so that just goes from 1 to 5, and then it sets up the little... Ah. The, the, mic, the mic stands a little bit in the way, which is why that was weird. But anyway, um, yeah, so we go 5, 1. So we set up the 5, 1. Uh, we start with triadic harmony of, over here. Nothing. Right? Uh, triad, triadic stuff, more triadic stuff here. Uh, we have an extra voice on it, but this is this is still all triads here. Uh, and then here we we get into some more interesting harmony, and then here we get into some very interesting harmony. So there's basically just like this giant beast chord right here. Um, so let's look at that. Let's look at that because it's very interesting. Um, yeah. So let's see. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, right? What is that chord? Um, I will show you what that chord is. Uh, let me, let me, let me do a thing real quick here. MIDI settings, portable grant, enable, whoa. Okay, now, there, we have it enabled. Now, that is the chord, okay? So what I have elected to call that is a B major sharp 15 sharp 11 over G, uh, which is a super Lydian chord over the flat six. So pretty spicy stuff right there. Uh, the way I originally composed it was just this, but then I wanted more bass in the sound, so I added that. And since it's in the middle of the song, having the gnarly harmony works really well, and it sounds great, doesn't it? Like that sounds pretty good, and it sounds actually a lot nicer than right. Sounds nicer than that. Um, sounds nicer with vo voices. And just generally, I've noticed that voices, you can sing chords lower. Like this chord, you know, if I play a chord down here, this is like a, an F major triad in, in root position starting on F2. Like that's kind of muddy. It's not ideal, but vocals sound great. Like that sounds really good with vocals. Um, and that's close to what I did at the beginning. In, in the beginning, I do one inversion above that. Uh, but at the end, actually, I do do that. So. Yeah, I do this, except it's also, we've also got those. Anyway, okay, so uh, yeah, that's that's the monster chord right there. And then there's a couple of other monster chords that come after it, but uh, what it gets to here is just an F major chord. So that's just, or F major seven. And uh, this is kind of a microcosm for the whole structure from there to the end, actually, because that's kind of what it does by the end as well. It goes to F. Um, but then we have more interesting harmony in here, although this is like a big unison line. Whoa, 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 we're all over the place. Where are we? Okay. I put all my cards. So we obviously go to harmony there, but I put all my um, the, that, that top vocal is very high. And uh, this note right here, it's not the top of my vocal range, but it's pretty close. It's like a minor third, major third away from a, the top of my vocal range uh, that is that is reasonably usable. So it went pretty high there, um, but uh, yeah, it was fun. So then the high vocals come back, but they're like an octave lower in the second time. The table. Just because the melody is an octave lower at that point, not because I actually sang it down an octave. And then we have some off beats, which is funny because... Um, the, the original Mac Ayers tune actually has offbeats in it at this point in the harmony. Oh no, what have I done? What have I done? Here we go. Okay. You ain't ever going to show you. Anyway, there are actually offbeats there in the original tune, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Aha. Okay. Looking at my list. The next thing is this little guy. 
This little guy's fun. So this little vocal fill, I would call it. Show your hand. Uh, show your hand. So it's pretty cool. Um, and the reason why is because it is quoting the intro melody, which uh, is actually also in other places besides just the intro, but it is the intro melody to the Mac Ayers tune. Easy. Um, and so he goes, Have you heard? Oh no. This is why I turned MIDI off, because I accidentally play audio clips. Okay. Have you heard what they say? That the more things change, the more they stay the same. Right? And uh, that melody is from the intro, um, and so I quote it there, so it's kind of cool, but I'm using, uh, but I'm also echoing lyrics from the hook, so I'm singing the melody from the intro, but using the lyrics from the hook as, a, as an echo or a, uh, as a, yeah, as an echo or a vocal fill in this, which I think is pretty cool. But another thing that I thought about um, was this. <laughs> Wish I could be part of your world, right? Little Mermaid, part of your world. Sounds like it could really, really easily go into that, and I'm pretty sure that this is part of it. I mean, like that, just those three notes. Wow, right? <laughs> um, going up three, four, five in a diatonic major scale. Um, not that uncommon, but for some reason, it really made me think about the Little Mermaid uh, song, and so. I kind of wanted to put that in, but I immediately shot that idea down because I know Amy Nolte makes money off of her videos, and so uh, she might get threatened with a copyright claim because Disney's really uptight about that. So uh, I didn't want to threaten her with a copyright claim or, or um, uh, what should I say? I didn't want to make her video susceptible to a copyright claim, and so... Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be filing the claim, so I suppose I wouldn't be threatening, but I would be making her video susceptible to a copyright claim if that was in it. So, uh, anyway, I, I'm not actually sure whether she monetized the video or not, but uh, there you go. That's why I didn't do that, but it was kind of cool to think about anyway. Uh, so, you might notice that there is a little bit of a weird stuff going on down here with these these bass vocals. These are, in fact, bass vocals. Uh, and the reason is that the the basically my vocal range pretty much bottoms out at a G or a G flat. Um, generally, G is like the lowest comfortable note, and I can hit a G flat if I want to. Um, but if I want to hit an F, this guy, I'm a baritone. So if I want to hit an F, it's pretty difficult for me, um, and it really doesn't happen unless I wake up early one morning and have a particularly low voice that day. Um, now, sometimes when I'm sick, I can hit way lower. Sometimes I've been able to hit like a, all the way down to a D before uh, when I was really sick, but uh, <laughs> um, hitting that F was difficult, and so I did wake up one morning. Uh, fortunately, during the, the three days that I had to do this, I did wake up one morning um, Sunday morning, and I was able to sing an F. However, uh, it, it was still pretty difficult, and I was a little sharp on it, which is why I I kind of split this up, and, and this is the F chord down here. So actually, if we start there, that's, that's where the F chord starts, because that's where the... Right? And so basically what I did is I just tuned, I fine-tuned them down just a tad. So they're just like fine-tuned down like 30 cents, 20 cents, really not that far. That's less than a, that's like a fifth or three-tenths of a semitone. Really not that far, but uh, that's what that is. So, um, you know, I, I would hope that you don't, you know, crucify, crucify me for that. But that is what that was. Um, because I was just singing them a little sharp. Because if I sing super low, I'm going to tend to be sharp. If I sing super high, I'm going to tend to be flat. Because I want to, you know, my voice wants to relax. Um, and I think that's probably the case with most people. At least um, when they're not really trained. Like I'm not really trained in singing. I've, yeah, never really learned anything about singing. I've just done it, and uh, it's a pretty normal thing to do. But I, I don't really know much about it. So, um, here we go. <laughs> So what is this about? So you can hear how that kind of is an artificial fade. And that is because when I recorded this, right, this was before I recorded everything else. So normally I would go top down. Like for most of these most of these chord groups, uh, most of these lines, I would I would sing it from top down. But with this one, I sang the bottom first because it was early morning and my voice was going to go up pretty soon and I wouldn't be able to hit that F. Um, or I wouldn't be able to even get close to it. You know, I was like, I was like, you know, a fifth, of, a fifth of a semitone sharp on it, but I was going to be, you know, a whole, a whole tone sharp on it. Uh, if I, if I didn't do it immediately. So I did this before I really knew exactly what I was going to be doing, uh, rhythm wise or art, or at least, yeah, uh, articulation wise. 
for all this stuff. And so it turned out I needed to have a breath for some of the middle voices in here. Uh, and so I had to edit a little bit there to, to make that happen. But that's that's what that's about. Uh, yeah, let's see. Tuning of the melody. Uh, yeah, so tuning of the melody is kind of weird. Uh, she sang the whole thing a little sharp. The whole thing is like uh, average of 10 cents sharp. But what's really weird is that some of the notes are sharper than others, like the thirds, right? So if we find the thirds, where are they? So here. So my keyboard is tuned 10 cents sharp right now. And her A is still sharp relative to my 10 cents sharp keyboard. So this is actually about 20 cents sharp. And that's pretty weird, right? But what's the, the weirdest thing to me is not just that it, 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 it's sharp in a lot of places and more sharp in some places than others, um, but that it sounds really good. And I thought maybe just intonation, but just intonation seats the third lower, not higher. So I don't know. It's kind of weird, but it sounds good. And um, I guess that's what matters. So uh, not really sure what's going on, but that's a little bit of an interesting thing. And, uh, yeah, you know, the articulation's changed a bit, so we start with, like, hum, which is pretty closed. Like, you have the attack, which is a pretty full attack, the ha huh, attack, but then it's hum, goes right into the mm, uh, but it's not hum, it's not hum, it's hum, right? Which, which is a different thing. Um, and then it does that again, and then it opens up into the ha, huh, and then it opens up into, uh saying the same word so like she says skin and then i say skin, skin. skin. right and then it's uh, and then uh, that's kind of the up, upside down e sound it's kind of like when you hold an i it's kind of what you do I put all my and then i sing the lyrics with her um so that's just i mean that's pretty straightforward just sing singing the lyrics everywhere except for the bass which actually does ums there instead anyway uh, and then we do more ha's with the off beats, and then we do uh, a vocal fill which echoes the thing, just like a couple of other times, and then ooze to end it out because I just thought that was nice. So uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you for watching this, and thank you to Amy Nolte for this challenge. I really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to doing more of this type of stuff in the future. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.